Western genre has been around for over 200 years, so it's not surprising that it inspired one of the very first video games. The Oregon Trail was created by three American school teachers back in 1971. In contrast to today's crop of cowboy shooters, it cast players as a wagon leader, guiding settlers safely from Missouri to Oregon. The game was designed to teach students about history while they played. Howdy, partner. What can I get you? I'm here about the bounty. Well, if your mind's made up, he's over there. <laughs> but dying ain't much of a living, boy. Before it was the console developer we know today, Nintendo was in the arcade business, and they made a pair of westerns in the 70s. The first was Wild Gunman, a quick draw game that used a light gun and live action footage of actors. Years later, it would evolve to replace the actors with cartoon sprites, before eventually being ported to the NES. <laughs> The arcade version even made a famous cameo in a certain time-travelling film series. <laughs> Nintendo's second release was Sheriff, an arcade shooter that used two joysticks. It was also one of the first games to feature art from none other than the legendary designer Shigeru Miyamoto. The next Wild West adventure to hit the arcades was Gunsmoke, which added cowboys to the already popular scrolling shooter genre. Sunset Riders up the size of your posse with four playable characters and loads of bull. Then Blood Brothers combined the shooting gallery with some nifty dive rolls, and of course the best level completion dance in history. Thanks for your time, little lady. That ain't no way to speak to a lady, Pilgrim. Ain't nobody calls me Pilgrim, especially not some dooted up egg sucking gutter trash. I don't think I introduced myself properly. People around here call me O'Shea. Rick O'Shea. Unfortunately, the biggest hangover from 80s shooters was full motion video. Howdy, stranger. We need your help. Mad Dog McCree led the charge with a light gun game that trotted out all the usual Western cliches. It was heavy on trial and error, but light on gameplay. Plus, the acting was worse than some of those first spaghetti Western films. Be careful, that's Mad Dog's boys over there. You're a dead man, O'Shea! Come on, gang, let's make like a tree and get out of here. Terribly sorry about the mess, man. This, uh, ought to cover it? Touché, Ricochet. The 90s was the decade where innovation finally arrived in the Wild West, often resulting in games that turned the Western setting on its head by combining them with something unexpected. Afternoon. Let's call these Bizarro Westerns. Wild Guns on the Super NES took gameplay inspiration from Blood Brothers and added a dash of robots for a steampunk-inspired tale of revenge. Alone in the Dark 3 introduced us to the horror western, complete with zombie cowboys and possessed animals. It delivered on atmosphere, but the slow pace left the saloon door open for other horror games that had far better action. And that's exactly what the aptly titled Blood delivered. The pixelated gore and lumbering enemies were actually pretty intense. So much so that you spent most of the game hightailing it backwards while shooting just to save your skin. One of the weirdest western shooters was Wild Arms. It was a classic tale of an innocent farm boy seeking adventure, except the Japanese RPG influence meant this boy was also a dream chaser who used magic to fight demons. Despite the odd mix of genres, the game's accomplished 3D battles and clever puzzles made this the start of a popular new franchise. But one of my favourite Bizarro Westerns has to be Oddworld, Stranger's Wrath. Taking the bizarre creature design from the same world that spawned Abe's Odyssey and slapping a western coat of paint on it resulted in a surprisingly entertaining adventure starring a bounty hunting lion who used cute little creatures as ammo in his crossbow. Hey O'Shea! 
I'm calling you out! Are you ready to meet your maker, boy? One of the first modern traditional westerns was Dead Man's Hand. Hat hurts. It delivered plenty of classic western themes like saloon shootouts and gun battles from horseback. However, the genre didn't really wear in its boots until a couple of years later with the call of Juarez. In it, you could play as an Indian who packed a bow and arrow. A unique gameplay feature back then, not so much today. You got to also play as a preacher who dealt justice with his Bible and his six-shooter. This double-barreled approach meant a lot of variety for Western fans. But the real hero of the gaming Western was the third-person genre. In 2004, Red Dead Revolver brought these games into the spotlight with its atmospheric love letter to spaghetti Westerns. The graphics were a bit dusty, but it hit all the right targets. Big characters, classic shootout locales, and clever use of slow motion to emphasise its jewels. A year later, the West got its biggest adventure yet, with Gun. Players were let loose on a large open world that featured all of the Western hallmarks, like gun slinging and horse riding, from hunting to poker playing. But the game that outgunned Gun and gave us our best Western adventure yet was Red Dead Redemption. Rockstar took its Grand Theft Auto formula and transplanted it into the desert masterfully. The cornerstone of any Western is the gunfights, and they've never been more authentic than these. Plus, the cast was full of memorable stars. Extra hardware fitted to my old Trojan horse here. You, you what? <laughs> but the real hero was the West itself. It looked breathtakingly amazing. And despite it being set in a desert, they somehow managed to design interesting gameplay around every corner. This was a world where any wannabe cowboy could get lost in for weeks. <laughs> Ideal and land boy! Guess he didn't have enough steel for the job.